What's going on, FA Nation? John Pemba here with James Grande. Welcome to the Fantasy Alarm NBA DFS podcast and live stream recording here for Thursday's four-game main slate. James, it'll be a quick one here today. Uh, still, with four games, we have some top-tier talent on the slate. Luka Doncic, obviously, uh, topping it out here. We got a handful of teams on back-to-backs. Uh, in fact, only was it only Washington, Miami, and Philly. Uh, yeah. are not on back-to-backs on this slate here. So uh, maybe we'll get some news at some point today of, of guys sitting or resting. Or we'll obviously wait and find out that. But we have obviously got, you know, James Harden we know is out, LaMelo Ball. Uh, at some point we'll be back, but not today. Uh, Bradley Beal has already been ruled out. Tyler Hero's questionable. Um, you know, some of the sort of the bigger names that we're waiting on. Uh, Christian Wood, Gordon Hayward are out. Uh, Nurkic and Grant are questionable to play. They both missed last night's contest there. Um, so we'll see, obviously, as the day moves on. Uh, if any additional injury news breaks, we'll have it in the Discord. You're on the playbook today, so uh, we'll be ready to go for the people. Yeah, I'm just thinking about it, John. This game in Miami, I wonder... I don't know how Hurricane Nicole is impacting Miami specifically, because I know it's impacting a lot of Florida. Like, it, the eye is going right over Orlando and stuff, so I wonder if they're going to be impacted at all. I didn't really think about it till this very moment. And also, I know this, the storm is also headed towards Georgia. Could we be down to a two-game slate by the time this kicks off? I don't know. We'll, see. Uh, we'll obviously approach it as a four-game slate, but it is something to consider. Like, Yeah. I mean, they moved, they moved the Orlando game to 5.30 yesterday because of the storm. Right. Um, I'm surprised that if it was going to be an issue for Miami, I feel like they would have done the same thing. So, um, you know, But like you said, who knows? We'll see what happens as, we, as the day moves on. We'll get that information, obviously, out to you. We know one thing. FanDuel will keep it as it is. They don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care what time they'll keep the games on the slate yeah, they'll they'll, keep, they could be slate. they could tip off in an hour and Fanduel's like nah lock lock is at locks out <laughs> at noon today sorry um all right let's get into it here uh, do you have any game totals of four games anything uh, available for us here yeah um slate low dallas washington 209 Oof. that's yeah it's brutal uh dallas three and a half point favorites on the road um philly is a one point dog in atlanta 221 and a half total there um, Charlotte getting ten and a half in Miami, two fourteen total. That's pretty ugly too. And then Portland, New Orleans are hammered. That starts at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, uh, yeah. Two twenty five game total slate high. Pelicans giving six and a half to yeah. beat Portland. I, I typed out late night hammer for like the first time I think all season yesterday. Um, you know, I feel a little disappointed in myself. We're big. We're big late night hammer fans here. And I feel like we haven't discussed enough about late night hammer uh, slate options yeah. too often. So, uh, but yeah, Portland, New Orleans at eight o'clock. Great, you'll be you'll be in bed and you'll know if you're winning money or not uh, on this <laughs> slate. So, uh, let's get into it. Right, point guard position here. Uh, it, instead of sort of just breaking it down by tiers because it's a smaller slate, there's only so many options here. Um, you know, guys that I know that we're going to be in on here. I think you can play either Atlanta guard. Um, both of them are fine. I've been fading Luca and Giannis when they're over 12K. Um, it really hasn't hurt me doing that. Yep. Do you think on a four-game slate, because of what his ceiling is, that is something that we should consider a little bit more? Or are you fine just sort of, again, taking him off your board and playing the 10K guys, playing the 9K guys who have 50 fantasy point upside? Yeah, man, I don't think he's off our board, right? Because there's nobody else. I mean, Embiid, I guess trey possibly lillard but like nobody can get us 80 or 70 for that matter as consistently as luca has and not consistent but like as much as luca right. has and can um so like i'm not going to take him off my board it might be lower ownership because the points you made like it hasn't killed us he hasn't been great um, from a fantasy perspective and it's a terrible game total right. i mean 209 but, you know, it's Luka, and he could also start this game off 8-for-8 eight eight with 20 first-quarter points and, yeah. like, have four rebounds, four assists, and nobody would bat an eye and be like, oh, Luka's in, in yeah. his bag today. So, like, maybe from that perspective, you're like, oh, that's going to be lower ownership. I can get Luka Doncic, who can go for 80 at, at the lowest ownership possible on a four-game slate. So, not crossing him off my board, but I also agree. I don't think fading him is – it hasn't hurt us, and I don't know if it will continue to do so. It will one day, right? He will get 75 fantasy points, and yep. if you don't have him, like, you're screwed. But, um, you know, you can. You don't have to. It's I think it's, you know, based on your roster construction. Too. Yeah, it's just a trend we've seen so far is a lot of these. There's been a lot of scoring. Some A lot of these these uh, middle-er, tier, 
tier tier one Bs, right? They've been going out there and giving you fifty plus, or Javon Carter even goes out there and gives you <laughs> sixty. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, so yes, yeah, so again, I think that Trey Murray Lillard, great. Um, Rozier in McCollum. I like McCollum more of, of the yep. group. Um, Maxi, you. This is a guy that you and I had discussed before. Highest price we've seen him at um, all season. He's eighty two hundred dollars. He's playing forty minutes a night. There's no James Harden. Joel Embiid is back. Eighty two hundred dollars. He given he's given us forty three and forty seven fantasy points in two of the last three games. Um, still taking a boatload of shots. He just didn't hit his shots the other night. Is it just, you know, we're just not used to paying 8200 for Tyrese Maxey. The, the the production kind of matches the price. Are you willing to pay it, though? Yeah, I think so. Um, just given how everyone's price tag feels elevated on this slate. And, you know, the peripheral stats have been kind of a concern, I think. And then they weren't last game, but he misses all his shots. Like, right. this is a guy who, even with that poor shooting, is shooting 46% on the year. He's shooting 42% from three. Like, he missed a bunch of free throws last game, which seems a little uncharacteristic for a guy shooting 75% from the line. So um, I'm okay paying it. And I don't think a lot of people will get to 8,200 just because, oh, and Bede's back. Like he can't possibly pay off this value. Well, we paid 9K plus for James Harden sure. when Joel Embiid's on the floor. And Maxi is just as much of a volume shooter as Harden is clearly when he is like in a primary scoring role. Yeah. And he's kind of, if we're going to get five rebounds, six assists, like that's James Harden light, right? Like that's similar to what Harden can provide there. So um, I don't expect another four for 18 shooting night. Um, get facing a team coming off a of back to back. Like he has the fresh legs. So I do think Maxie's interesting and I do think he's going to check in lower own because of it. I, I agree with you, especially when you're looking at guys that are around him again. I think a lot of people go to McCollum, 84. You have that revenge game, you know, sort of narrative that a lot of us like to play. He's also been very, really good. I know the last couple of games he's tailed off a little bit, but we're talking again, um, just missing shots, right? Three for 13, three for 11. Um, you know, if he starts hitting a couple more, then he's in that mid-30s range and, and probably something that you can afford. Um, it shouldn't obviously be lost on us that Zion, Ingram, and all those guys are back in that lineup. Um, so maybe the 25 shot days are not going to be there for yeah. him, but, um, on a smaller slate, again, we talk about this a lot, smaller slates, generally the scoring cash line is lower. Um, so the expectations for a lot of these guys, you know, you, you don't really need the eight X from a guy you'd, as you would on like a 15 game slate to sort of break into a cash line. If McCollum goes for four X, that could be good enough for you here on a smaller slate. So not that we're not looking for the value, but you know, again, you can kind of right. get away with it a little bit. Uh, love Kyle Lowry at 69. Um, even in this head, you know, a matchup where they're big favorites here. Uh, he's just been great. Obviously, if Hero's out, he gets a little bump uh, there as well. Uh, Hero, see any updates here? Still questionable uh, with the ankle injury for him. I'd also play Hero, by the way. Yeah, yeah, plays. I was going to say, can certainly play Hero. Um, thoughts on the next group below them? You have DSJ, Melton, Morris. Um, guys, again, priced up. But, you know, they're, they're kind of – they're playing still, you know. Dennis Smith Jr. Just still played 34 and 33 minutes with right. Terry Rozier back. So, um, you know, that whole that whole tier there. Morris being cheaper, I think, is is some appeal, but he's in the worst game system. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I think Dennis Smith Jr. could be interesting, John. I mean, we talked about – we've now talked about, like, bad shooters after bad shooters. Two <laughs> games ago, he went one for 11. Yeah. Um, and that was with Rozier back. But – Three blocks, 10 steals, or 10 steals, 10 assists and five rebounds. You know, still put up 30 fantasy points. Yep. The game after that, four steals. Like, Dennis Smith Jr. consistently getting us two or more blocks and steals a night. Um, I don't hate it at 61 if he's going to play big minutes. I think you mentioned Monty Morris is probably the contrarian option of the three. Yeah. Um, I don't, like, you and I talk about Melton a lot as, like, a really good fantasy point for minute guy, but he's usually closer to 5K. And now he's 6K. So, like, you can get there. I just, you know, he's, like, fourth, I think, on the priority list amongst uh, members of his team, right? It's like sure. Embiid, yeah. Maxi, Toby. And, and Toby. And yeah. now we're paying 6K for the fourth option. I don't know. Um, I'd probably rather play DSJ and Boris over now. Uh, for value here, uh, Goodwin the other day, this is another guy, big price bump for him. He was 3,000 Stone Cold Men for two slates and 10x both days. Uh, and DraftKings was like, oh, 
Uh, all right. right. And, right. Then, and now he's 47. Uh, definitely loses the luster, I think, in, in this yeah. matchup. Uh, again, we talk about this all the time. Like, Dallas is just a fantasy killer, it feels like. Yep. They, teams don't score on them. They play super slow. You talked about it's a 209 total. Um, under him, though, is a bit more interesting. We've talked about Gabe Vincent here a lot lately. Uh, usually we associate guys like Gibson and Struss and D-Rob to like needing guys out of the lineup. And sure, guys have been out of the lineup during this stretch. Butler missed time. Heroes missed time. If somebody's Oladipo, out, Oladipo hasn't played Oladipo yet. Oladipo like, still hasn't played, right. I mean, Gabe Vincent 4,400 is, is on the floor. Like, I, it's okay. I, I am fine with that. Four straight games of 20 plus fantasy points. He goes out there and he gets his shot. Um, you know... Does would an active hero worry you here um, for Gabe Vincent? I guess, but like you look at the landscape of their team, it's like and Cody Martin's questionable too, right? Cody Caleb, Martin doesn't Caleb play. Martin, which one it yeah, is. I mean, if Cody Martin doesn't play, then you're probably moving hero down. He's six five. Like Butler's yeah. playing. Struss like, starts like, if power forward. Out. Struss is now playing small forward. So like yeah. you have Vincent as like that hybrid backup point guard, backup shooting guard, right? Yeah. So like he's still in a prominent role. I think I think Oladipo being out really just solidifies Vincent's role because mm-hmm. Oladipo can ball handle and play the two, obviously. So I think Vincent's role is pretty secure. And I think like a lot of people go the route of um, Goodwin. And I think some people may even go the route of Shaden Sharp, especially if Portland is missing a bunch of guys again. Yeah. Because Shaden Sharp played 20 minutes last night seventh overall pick this year and give Vince is just like that steady that steady guy also since we've recorded started recording John it was a nine and a half point spread it's been bet up to ten and a half so like Gabe Vincent's gonna get burn on in blocks too like sure. so um I think he's solidified his role in the rotation and there's potential for more if this game gets out of hand I agree with you uh any other rally guards for you Small slate, not much, not much out no, there. No, I mean, if there was like a, if there was an Atlanta guy out, like you could consider Aaron Holiday, but even he's not like, he hasn't really like been all that great. Yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, may- maybe a flyer on Alvarado if you think that game. Someone, I think someone would have to probably, someone would probably have to be out. I, I would think like in the at the guard spot. Yeah, he's just a uh, another a high fantasy point per minute. Guy. Yeah, he is. He just doesn't play enough minutes, but yeah. You know, 13 and 13 and 15 and 16, 18 and 18, 26 and 18. Like he gets out there and he's just not afraid. So mm-hmm. um, maybe on a smaller slate, if you go stars and scrubs, you, you can live with 18 points out of him. You know, you can you see what you get. There. Yeah. Uh, shooting guard. We talked about DeJounte already at 10 3. Again, those guys are expensive. Uh, Ingram's at 87, a big price bump from yesterday. He was in the 7K range. Um, 38 fantasy points for him here. He's still filling up the stat sheet. Uh, it just, it's just expensive. It's just an expensive. We need 44. We need yeah. 44, which obviously he's done, what, three times this year? I think the issue we're coming to when we talk about this on Small Slates too is like at some point you just look at the, at the position, you're like, well, he's just the best guy at the position. So like yeah. I either play crap or... Or I just overpay for Ingram for his 35 fantasy points, right? And, like, that's good right. enough. And I'll make it up somewhere else, right? Yep. So, yep. Um, again, we've talked about some of these guards already. Like, if Hero's active, you'll play Hero shooting guard and play yep. someone else a point guard. Like, that works. We didn't talk about Simons. I feel about the same thing as them. Like, Lillard's yep. back, but he's still okay. If you want to play him, that's fine. Um, not, not, I'm not in love with it, you know? Um, you know, Oubre's been super inconsistent, uh, you know, lately. So if you want to pay 6K for him, he's a good chance he goes gives you 20 fantasy points and not 30. Yeah. Uh, I like Dinwiddie a lot. We t- I put yep. him in the playbook yesterday um, at the top. Like if you're if you're playing that single entry game or on Fanduel, like lo- really like Dinwiddie. It's more of a game matchup again, 209. But maybe again, maybe you just get one guy in this matchup because it's you got to save the money. And Dinwiddie at 62 fits your build. He's not going to kill you. I mean, he's really exceeded value the majority of the time this year. So uh, maybe Dinwiddie's the locked-in shooting guard for this DraftKings slate. Um, He might be. It is a back-to-back, and the game sucks. So that is something to consider. Uh, I'm looking at – so it's obviously a better matchup for Dallas. Washington, 22nd in defensive rating. 
um, the pace. Dallas is dead last, and Washington's twenty seventh. Yeah, so like no, it's dude. It's just going to be brutal. It's going to be slow. We know. We know it's going to be slow, right? It's just what? What are you going to do? <laughs> no, no, I, no. I'm not saying it's like you can't. You're not like we're not necessarily fading the game. That's not what I'm saying. I'm yeah. just saying like uh, like calling anyone from this game a lock just gives sends me. Sends chills sure. up my spine. No, I, listen, I agree. Maybe, like I said, maybe he has some revenge about the fact that this team basically kicked him off it. Yep, right? kicked him off. Yeah, <laughs> no, they, they packed him up, yeah, shipped him out. They told him to shut up, up. go play yep. guard, and then go to Dallas, right? Yep. Like, did not care for him at all. Um, so maybe he has a little revenge in his heart. Because, um, I mean, after him, again, again, guys who talked about Goodwin already, you know, Will Barton's in that game, hasn't impressed. Tim Hardaway off the bench hasn't really impressed. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know where else to go here if we're not spending up for like Ingram, any of the other like hybrid guard shooting guards that we talked about already or playing like Dinwiddie. So, yeah, I mean, I think both those guys you mentioned are fine. Like Barton, the minutes seem fine with Bradley Beal out. And the Tim Hardaway thing is interesting with um, who's that? Uh, Christian Wood, because Christian Wood sits and then. Hardaway plays 22 minutes. Maybe would have been more if he didn't go two for 10 shooting. Sure. And we know Tim Hardaway, you know, although he hasn't been that guy this year, can be a really, really, really streaky shooter. Yeah. We've seen in two of the three games where he scored, you know, 16 plus points, he's given us 27 and 30 fantasy points, which at 4K would be outstanding. So I think both those guys are fine. I guess maybe one guy to look out for, John, would be Duncan Robinson if – Hero and Caleb Martin sit. Uh, Robinson, three of the last four games has been over 25 minutes. So 3,500, potential blowout. Um, you know, when they have guys out, Duncan Robinson just seemingly plays. So most most expensive both those guys, towel boy in the league right there, Duncan Robinson. Most expensive third stringer in the league for sure. <laughs> I mean, dude, he got hot for a playoff run and then just cashed. Got, and it was like, bag. I actually can't shoot. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to podcast Psych? instead. Yeah, I'm going to go play Call of Duty. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> all right, small forward position here. Toby's at the top at 71. Again, uh, a little bit expensive for Toby, but he's at least been putting it up, right? Even with yep. the beat back, 42 yep. fantasy points. So uh, definitely down to, to run it back with him a little bit there. Uh, we love Josh Hart, right? And Nurkic and Grant are out. What did we get? We got 11 rebounds, 9 rebounds, 7 rebounds, 9 rebounds. Um, you know, A couple of games at 8 assists in that low range. Like, you're not playing Josh Hart for scoring. You're playing it for everything else. And then if he scores, and we, we talked about this earlier this year when he popped off for like 40 whatever or near 40, if he scores, then you're you're getting a GVP potential winner there. Um, so I, I'm fine playing here. He's safe. Get, get him against New Orleans. The only, the only difference from now and then the early, early part of this year was he was in the 5Ks. Now he's like mid-6Ks. Yeah. And that's the only worry about him not getting to value but i agree if the if the scoring comes i mean we're in for we're in for a good night. yeah 40 50 fantasy points there uh yeah then the price drops off dramatically right it's toby at 71 it's Hart at 65 we've talked about Ubre already and then 49 for hunter uh 49 for murphy who isn't really playing much anymore because guys are back i like jalen mcdaniels a lot i just talk about him every slate but again not a good game for him in here against portland the other night uh, just 20 minutes in that game, didn't shoot well. Um, they're very inconsistent with his with his playing time of late. Um, you've been touting a little bit of Herb Jones here. Are you uh, you running that back? I mean, as, if he's going to score, it's like the Josh Hart thing, but like $2,000 cheaper. Sure. Where it's like, he's a great defender. We've gotten three steals in three of the last four games. It's he's weird that he's. Back. It's weird that he's the scorer with like McCollum Ingram and, and right. Zion, right? Like, <laughs> right? Yeah, and that and that's the problem. Like he is not going to be like a high usage guy, um, and it's probably not going to stick around too much longer. Nine, twelve, thirteen shots. But if they're falling, there's no reason not to continue to to go to him. And he's forty eight hundred dollars. Like it's, it's a pretty good matchup against Portland. Um, this game has the best total on the board. I like Herb Jones, and um, again, it's very, like, his fantasy production, if, if you just go through the box score, has been very contingent upon the scoring. Um, three games, he's only played seven games this year. Right. Three of them, he scored double figures. All of those games, he's had 25 or more fantasy points. 
The other four, he has not scored double figures. He has not scored 20 fantasy points. Right. So, like, it's very contingent on the scoring, and it's very hard to, like, be like, yes, he is going to continue to score. But he's in a good groove. He is shooting the ball well. Um, and he's staying out of foul trouble, which seemingly is – seemingly staying out of foul trouble, which has kept him on the floor. So, um, I will play Herb Jones. I'll probably only play him in tournaments. But, um, you know, again, he's like – it's like kind of like Josh Hardish, but again, almost two thousand dollars cheaper. Sure, um, I have nobody else in this tier that I would play. Winslow, Winslow, if the, all the Portland guys are out, I know he was bad last night, but he started twenty six minutes. I think he could bounce back from that. Um, but that's he's like he's just the same thing as Herb Jones almost. <laughs> like they're all the same. Yeah, player. it's all it's all the same. They're low all the volume, same player. Sh- low volume shooting. Spider Man meme. Yeah. Spider Man meme. Yeah, exactly. Uh, power forward then. Uh, Buckets at 91, Zion at 88, Kuz at 74. Uh, topping your topping your list there. Um, do you just play Zion here at 88, especially if, if Nurkic and, and Grant are out, right? Like that's a spot. For Probably. Him. Yeah, and you know what? If we do look at the back to back that he played, he played 37 minutes on the second leg of a back to back. 11 for 20 shooting with 29 points, which was a season high. So. Um, Zion just looks healthy, right? Like that's knock on wood the most important thing. And um, I, yeah, I think I hate that he's had like he like he should be a consistent twenty yep. shot a night guy. Correct, and yeah. ten rebounds, especially with Valanciunas playing. Other than excluding um, Wednesday night, Valanciunas has played twenty minutes every game. Right, <laughs> like he should be grabbing ten rebounds a game. There's no reason for him not to take twenty shots and not to grab ten rebounds. Yeah, like they should be, they should be working him the basketball a little more. Eleven shots in two of the last three games is not really an accept, no. or two of the last four doesn't really feel acceptable for for Zion here, which is one of my biggest complaints about him since he's been in the yep. league. Like he teases, he says a tease, all he can be. Yep. Uh, Mid tier range here. Um, I mean, Collins, Washington had a good game. You know, maybe that was at the expense of Jalen McDaniels last night, right? He kind of went out there, mm-hmm. Plumley played a lot. Uh, and then Max Struss, three guys that I'm, uh, I think are usable. Collins is probably last on my list there, but um, maybe maybe Struss goes first. Collins, do you, would you say Collins probably has the most upside of them? No, I said Collins is probably last on my list. I know, but like of the three, oh, uh, like he probably has the most upside. I don't think so. Not not with Trey and, and Dejounte. I actually think with PJ Washington. My actually, I guess, yeah. No, no Hayward, no Lamelo. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, he's got yeah, a, he's fine. got a handful of games there with twenty plus shots. Um, he's good. He just is another inconsistent guy who, like, they yeah. the team doesn't know how to use him either, right? They mm-hmm. just like inconsistent with his play. Um, they don't know what position he should be playing half the time. You know, <laughs> like, um, stress feels the safest. Yeah, sure. Yeah, especially with especially if Martin and Hero sit, like he's just gonna play thirty minutes. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. Um, if Nance is active, I would play him because he's been playing over Val Valanciunas. Yep. Um, Same. So he'll be he'll probably be a close to a core play because he's been really good during his um, yeah. time on the yeah. floor as well. Right. Um, and then we go down to value tier, and I don't again don't really have much here. I think the Dallas guys w- without Christian Wood could be interesting. Um, Finney Smith played 30 minutes. He only gave you 15 fantasy points, but you know, we had 24 the game before that against Brooklyn. Uh, and then Maxi Kleba, we haven't talked about any 3K guys yet. Uh, 33 minutes for him. Again, I know another low volume guy. Um, 29 and 33 minutes though. We've seen him play better. So, right. um, if you're just looking for dart throws, you know, maybe, maybe a Maxi spot here. I mean, he just gets us to 20 fantasy points as a W. Like, if he can scrape up 20 fantasy points. 5X fantasy is 17 points. fantasy points, so. Yeah, um, it's not the worst. It's not the worst. Also, I mean, I'm uh, just thinking look- on this slate where we haven't found much else. Um, You know, he's been he's been a 3K guy that's been on the floor, so. Yeah, I was looking to see if Washington was a bad rebounding team, but they're in the top half of the league. I didn't know if that was going to, like, maybe, like, you know, benefit us a little bit, but. um. Yeah, it's Maxi Hachimura forty one, Niang forty three. They're all like fine. Yeah, I mean Hachimura is certainly interesting. Twelve shots in the last two games with no, but he like why are they not like why do they I have know, a bunch of guys like Hachimura and Denny and they play Kispert like they have a bunch of guys that they just play like twenty three minutes. 
Yeah. You can't just give us one guy. We can be like, all right, 30 minutes a night. Like, lock him in. Like, let's go. Uh, it feels like it should be Hashimura, right? So he played 33 minutes against Philly, and he gave you a double-double. Like, yep. why are you... I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe that's the dark throw of the take at 41. Hashimura here with no Beal. Um, in this spot against Dallas, potentially. Dallas 22nd of rebounding. Maybe we get some... Yeah. Some rebounding from Hachimura because he's shown double digit upside already. But Possibly. who knows? Um, and then we, yeah, you mentioned Niang. He's just, uh, he, I think he's getting blowout run in those two 27 minute games, but um, we know he can shoot the basketball. So uh, if you're just looking for a guy to get hot, maybe maybe you throw a dart there. But again, four slate gets ugly. Uh, center. Zingers at the, uh, Embiid is your top price center here against Atlanta. Uh, we'll get Compella and get uh, John Collins' defense at times. Compella's been rebounding the basketball like a madman yep. uh, lately. Uh, I don't know if that you think would shorten up the uh, rebounding upside for Embiid. 19 rebounds in two of the last three <laughs> for Capella there. Um, but JoJo, in terms of spend-ups, maybe he is your top spend-up uh, yep. on the slate? Yeah, probably. The offense always runs through him with Harden, like without Harden. Five assists last game, no surprise. Actually, that's spread. that. That's a good point. I got to see what his assist prop total is. Um, it was at like three and a half for a little bit earlier this year, but last year without Harden on the floor, he was averaging like four and a half assists a game, five assists a game, or something like that. So yeah, he's good. I mean, he because th- they're just gonna dump it down and funnel the offense through him, like like they should. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I think I think it's a great spot for him. Be thirty five percent usage rate this year without him, without Harden on the floor. One point two fantasy points per minute. So. Uh, if picking between Porzingis or Bam, uh, I feel like Bam is going to be the more obvious choice here against Charlotte. Yep, one hundred percent. We talked about J Val. I, I put it in the chat yesterday when Nance got ruled out. I'm like Valanciunas is going to get the run, thirty minutes, got the run, twenty one and thirteen. Don't know why they hate this man so much. Yep. Um, but if Nance is out. Uh, and he's going to go up against Portland. They could have without Nurkic. Like, J Val probably is a core play for me. You know, double centers maybe today, right? Like, yep. I think either center in this game could be, like, if Nurkic plays, I think he could be interesting too. Like, whatever, whichever center. Valanciunas, I think, is a better value, but um, Nurkic could be in play if he plays too. Yep, that's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, you'll like Nurkic probably if Nance is in because then he's getting sort of that mm-hmm. different matchup for him there. Uh, would you play Capella against Embiid? Tournaments, maybe, yeah. I mean, we've seen 45 and 57 fantasy points in two of the last three. He's starting, maybe, maybe they're like, all right, let's, we should get this guy on the floor a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, I didn't get, I didn't get the, the Pelican. Like, they took Valentinus off the floor for Nance, and Capella went out there and had 21 and 19. Yeah. So, like, I just, I didn't understand the thought process on that one. Uh, Plumley at 5K. We we like the spot for him. He's been good. Dude, as long as he stays out of foul trouble, he's been pretty good. Um, and as long as they keep him on the floor and stay comp- in competitive games, like he's playing 25 plus minutes. So. Yep. Yep. Uh, any other value centers? Eubanks, I guess. If there's. No yeah, there. Eubank, no Nurk. Only 22 yep. minutes for him last night, though. So a little something to. He started strong, and then they took him off, and he like didn't play in most of the second half. It seemed like so. Yeah, it was weird. It was definitely weird. But um, he'll be he'll be very very popular if uh, Nurkic is out. I agree. Uh, all right, build the lineup. We going uh, JoJo. Yep. 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 Okay, and we like we're gonna go to Gabe Vincent Waters here. We yep. Think? Sure. All right, fifty seven hundred a player. Uh, let's see here. What did we? What do we like? Stress. Stress. Yep. Stress at power forward. Uh, guard play. Lowry. Yep. Okay. Uh, does Stress have shooting guard? I was about straight point guard. Shooting guard. Um, 5,500. Dinwiddie, 62. Fine. Yeah, it works. All right. Small forward. We have uh, 5,300 for a small forward forward and utility. I use Kleba in the uh, forward spot. Yep. Maxi. And then maybe Toby. And we have 5,500. Which is. 55 for you two. 55 for Monty Morris. Um, Plumlee. Or we go. Or we can go Herb in small forward. And then we have 7,800 for 
and we can get JVal 800 bucks. Then we have 800 bucks to spend. So close to Bam. So close to Bam. Yeah, so close to Bam. Uh, we have $800. We could go from. And that gives us hero to, or that gives us hero if we wanted over, to go there. Hachimura over Cleva? Yeah, we could do that. Let's do that. Hachimura has, I feel like, a better ceiling. Okay. Uh, so we have Vincent, Dinwiddie, Jones, Struss, Embiid, Lowry, Hachimura, Valanchunas. Do you think we need Embiid here, looking at that lineup? Um... Like if we go, we don't have if we go, to go. Bead to to Bam, we save three K. Then we have four heat. And we have four heat. Well, 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 we would switch off of somebody, right? Like we can get off of Kai. Uh, we can go Lillard um, over Kyrie or, or Lowry. We could play Ingram uh, there if we wanted to go in that direction, or we could keep Lowry at guard. Uh, and move off of Vincent it gives us seventy five hundred for uh, a guard or a forward, depending on how we wanted to sort of break down the matchup there. So, um, you know, just kind of play, just kind of playing around with with some stuff, right? I mean, uh, fifty one hundred dollar guard it goes back to Vincent. Let's see here. Uh, who did we like as a guard? We like Toby, right? Toby's a forward. Do we need a forward? You said a guard. Yeah, we know we need a guard. We need. A, I have a forty-five hundred for a guard, unless we move off of Jval. Mm, eh, it's like Will Barton, but I don't think we really wanted to go there. No. Um. Let's see. Yeah, I just I don't. It just feels like well, maybe we use Jval as our center and not. Um, not bam. So we go Valanchunas as the center. We have sixty four hundred for a utility. Sixty four hundred for a util. Yeah. Um. Are we Capella, actually, who's our, we, we liked Hachimura, right? Yep. All right, we'll do Hachimura. Eighty three hundred for a guard. Who's eighty three? Who's an eighty three hundred guard? Tyrese Maxey. Maxey, sure. All right, so we got, without MB now, we have Lowry, Dinwiddie, Jones, Struss, Valanchunas, Maxi, Harris, and Hachimura. Yeah, it's fine. It's not my, I, like, I I like Embiid, but I'm fine without him. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of different ways to make a more fair and yeah. balance. Because we had a couple of, like, very low usage guys in that in that first mm -hmm. line that we built sure. out there. So, um, still, definitely some, some playing around to do. This is kind of our first look process here. Uh, James Love the Playbook, get your questions in Discord, and we will be back for Friday's slate. We'll talk to you later.